Hey everybody, this is Alex Merced from alexmercedcoder.com and this is another video where we're going to be using Deno. Um, in this particular video, we're going to be using a Deno uh, with a library that's supposed to be sort of express, but in Deno. Um, I was playing with it. It's cool. It definitely feels like express. It's missing some features, but um, I've, I'll show you some workarounds. Um, cool. Okay, so I already have first project, so I'm going to make a new folder in this express folder called project2, so we can walk through how this would work. Okay, so bottom line is we make a new file, we'll call it, I'm going to call it server.jsx. The reason being is I am going to bring in React into it, because they're really, basically when you use express, you're used to functions like res.send and res.render, there really is no res functions. Essentially, the, the, the capability of this library, which is really called expressive, is you can do a JSON API, which is plenty. I mean, that's really all you really need um, for a lot of modern apps, if you're, especially if you're creating a single page application. But, you know, I was playing around, and the more I play around with Deno, the more I'm starting to realize that kind of some of its powers, especially with being able to parse JSX pretty much out of the box. Um, basically, I, I'll show you guys how you can, even though there isn't really a views engine, there really isn't a res.send or a res.render or anything like that, how would you send back some JSX pages? Okay, so first let's bring in the library. So again, this uses ES6 imports. So I'm going to import these libraries here. And I'll walk through why I bring them in. Okay, this is expressive. Expressive is sort of this... Um, version of Express that's being built for Deno. So that brings in that library. React, you guys know React. This is essentially what's going to parse the JSX. Um, and then React DOM server, this is going to be the function we'll use to also parse the JSX. Okay, essentially what's going to happen is that React will parse the JSX, turn it into DOM code, and then the React DOM server has a function that'll turn it into static HTML that we can then send back as a string. Okay, so that's this. Now, in the other framework I did, Pogo, Pogo actually does this by default. So if you were to return JSX in your routes, it automatically runs this function. And so I didn't have to bring it in in Pogo because Pogo was built with that functionality in mind. So for me to use it, I'm assuming also in Oak, I would have to bring in these two libraries. So just, um, just to give you guys some context. Cool, now this may look familiar if you've ever used Express. I'll create a variable for my port. Okay, um, my app, except here I don't have to do like, I don't have to require Express and then, you know, basically I just do expressive.app and that's the same thing as doing like Express and then saving and creating the app object. So that does that, that's good. Okay, then we have our middleware. Okay, and I'm actually uncomment up, so you can serve static files pretty easily, which is basically your main way to have views uh, in the current state of the library. Because I was looking through the source code, trying to see, you know, what are my response options. That's how I was able to figure out what I'm going to do. Um, but uh, you'll see. So this is just going to log certain things. Uh, this is our static folder, so that way you can have your static assets in a public folder. I'm not going to really use that in this video. If you've used Express, you know how that works, and it works. Um, and then it has a JSON body parser. Okay, um, I'm assuming URL encoded is also in there. I haven't tried it out. Um, which, I could go look in the source code and figure that one out later. But let me just show you what I did with the J JSX. Okay, and then let me copy over these um the this route right here well actually i'll just walk through it and do it myself so we're going to create a route app dot get okay and this is going to be the root route so if you use express you, you this all looks very familiar very familiar rec res so you have your rec and your res object now out of the gate you do have res.json so if you just want to send back json data or receive json data again this is definitely has the capability for you to create a nice API, okay? You can do that, no problem. But what if you actually want to render views? 
Okay, so basically the way you have to do it is that you have to change the properties on the response object, and that's really the only way I've been able to see to do this. So first you have to set up the header. So let me, let me go grab the little function for the header. Okay, so this is the function that sets the header. Okay. Um, and the only reason I know that function is there is because I've read the source code and try to see how it handled like some of these other functions that allow you to send responses. And essentially this function here is appending this header to the list of headers. And we want this because we want whatever we send back to be treated as H HTML. Not as JSON, not as URL encoded data, but as HTML. So we have that. Then we actually have to send something back. That's where this one, this line comes in. Copy. Okay. And basically what this does is saying res the body of the response is the result of this JSX, hello world, which is being put through this React DOM server render to static markup function, which takes this JSX, which gets rendered by React, and then renders it into static markup. So it turns into an HTML string. Oh. Turns it into an HTML string, and you're good to go. Okay, so really ideally what you would do is you'd probably make a separate page, make your React component, import the React component, and basically you could make a views folder. So I mean, if I really want to, I could do something like this. Just to show you guys, uh, make a folder called views, just to kind of follow convention. Uh, new file, we'll call it index.jsx. And I will go over here. I got to bring in React. Okay. So we'll copy the import of React from there. Okay, so I, really all I need, then I can just write my component, const index, actually, I'm not even doing it that way, export default, okay, Con export default equals, um, no, not export default, and it's props. Okay, and then this is going to return. Okay, that was, will return some JSX. This will, and we'll just keep it real simple. A div with a couple of headers, h1, props. dot cheese h2 perhaps dot other okay just to sh just to set that up save and there you go you have a component easy peasy why is it complaining yeah it's fine okay so there's the component. Let's bring that in over here. Which one is this? Is the right one? That's the old one. Let me just get the listener set up while I'm here. So let me grab the code for the listener. Is this for the right project? Yeah. So here's our server listener listening on port 3000. Okay, and again, we can use top level weight, which is awesome. So once this line of code is done, then this line of code will play, showing that my port is working. Life is wonderful. But I need to import my components. So import, and we'll call it index from, and that is in slash views slash index.jsx. Okay. Yep, good, it resolved it. And then what we can do here is say index, and then we'll put some props in there, cheese equals Gouda, and other equals hello world. Those are my props. 
close the component and there you go okay I'm just gonna render that component and uh, life's okay mm, anything else I want to do yeah that's it so then I need a CD into that folder CD Express CD project 2 and then we do deno run allow net because we need internet access allow read because I have that public folder set up so that way it doesn't complain about that and this is server.jsx so that's going to compile then it's going to compile the index component and now it's listening so let's head over and go to localhost 3000 and there you go see it rendered the JSX onto the screen so theoretically you could yeah you, you could literally render your whole page using uh, JSX this way and just create put them in the views folder and just bring them in like this which isn't too bad the only difference is between this and Pogo um, is that Pogo you didn't have to do all this react on extra code with react DOM server render the static markup because Pogo had that fun already inter basically had that functionality built in so right now Pogo is certainly in the lead of my favorite of the backend frameworks in Deno so far so between Pego Pogo Oak and Expressive their ver the version of Express based on where they're at right now again they're all in development they're all adding more features um, I like Pogo just because that sort of ability to not have to think about using JSX it just works it's nice um, but once you know that these are the libraries you need it's pretty easy to suddenly just make JSX work anywhere um, because basically all you need to do in any server because basically even if it doesn't see it's, even though I don't have like a res.render function or a res.send function I can just set the header manually which I did and then so that way the browser knows it's I'm sending an HTML string and then I use this function to render the JSX into an HTML string and huzzah you have templating uh, otherwise using like sending back JSON data through like res.json works just fine if you've used Express and uh, get receiving post requests in JSON that works fine as well if you have the body parser so if you're just making an API this works just like you vote like Express and uh, it feels just like Express if you're looking to do server-side multi-page applications, um, you have to do a little bit more work, but it's actually probably the easiest thing to do is just to use JSX, why not? Um, so, so far, JSX is a big winner in demo world, as uh, far as making all these other frameworks even more useful. And just the ease of being able to just put add JSX to anything that I've been working with so far has been pretty cool. So uh, yeah, hopefully you guys enjoyed that. But it's, again, pretty straightforward so again in these videos uh, we've gone over three different frameworks in Deno Pogo Oak and Express they all work you can create API's in any of them and you can do some server-side rendering in all of them it's just you know requires a little extra work than some of the more sophisticated node libraries because Deno's new and most of these libraries on top of it are even newer so have a great day and enjoy